Alright guys, this is a long-awaited video. I've been meaning to do it since last year. Har har, let's get that joke out of the way now. But no, really. A lot of people have asked me, what sort of supplies do I need to start building these swords? Well, I don't really need a whole lot. So here is just basically a rundown of the general things you'll need to get started. Now, the first thing you'll need is this cutting mat you'll see here. Now, usually, not a whole lot of people have a surface that you can safely cut on. So I recommend you get one of these self-healing cutting mats. Now, this you can find at any craft store, art store, for a little under 20 bucks. This is probably gonna be the most expensive thing you're gonna buy. All right, so the next thing we're gonna need is the paper. Now, I specifically use 110 pound cardstock. This is the stuff I mean by cardstock. Now, you can get this at a Walmart. It runs me a little under $7 for, what's this, 250 sheets. So not too bad. This is not A4 paper. Well, A4 really is just a size standard since I live here in the US. This is eight and a half by 11, but size really doesn't matter. It's the weight you're looking for. Now that turns out to about 199, or about 200 GSM. Anywhere around there is fine, give or take 40. Next on the list, is our craft knife. Now the particular brand of craft knife I use is called Exacto, but it really doesn't matter the brand as long as it is any sort of sharp cutting tool. It could be razor blades, could be box cutters. In fact, when I started making this uh, swords and whatnot, that's what I used, these break blade box cutters I got for like $1.50 from paint stores. All right, so the next thing we'll need, hot glue and hot glue gun. Now, it doesn't matter what size of glue stick you get. Really, if you can, the bigger the better. So go with the largest thing they have. They're not very expensive either. I picked all this stuff up for, I think around five bucks at Walmart. Everything that you see here, you can pretty much pick up at Walmart, save for maybe this cutting mat, which you may or may not be able to find, depending. All right, so next thing we have, craft sticks. Now these are the largest size my Walmart carries. These are the jumbo size craft sticks. More specifically, they measure 15 centimeters high by, what, 1.7 centimeters wide. So anywhere around that dimension will do. And last but not least, glue. Lots and lots of glue. So getting glue has been probably the most discussed thing on my comments section as a lot of people ask me, which brand of glue do you use? It doesn't matter. Go with whatever is the cheapest. This stuff is what I use, and they go for what? 44 cents a bottle, and I usually buy out the entire shelf at once. Now, usually you'll find Elmer's and possibly one or two other no-name brand. Just go with whatever's cheapest. Except whatever you do, do not go with glue sticks. They do not work. And these are the general tools you'll need if you're simply just following along and building one or two swords. Now, I do have a few tools that I bought specifically per project basis. I tend to do that a lot. Like there's this one tool in particular that's hanging off the edge of my desk right now. And that would be this Dremel tool that I specifically got to do butterfly knives. 25 bucks for this on Amazon. Now there are two more things you'll need, but they're not quite tools. And that's binder clips. And not just any binder clips either. You'll need them in all sizes. Now, the reason being is the paneling process on some of these swords require that you use binder clips to hold the edges down in place while the glue dries. Now, depending on the shape of the sword, you're gonna have to get a little bit creative in how you use these binder clips and maybe in conjunction with some popsicle sticks to keep the edges down. Now, sometimes for me, binder clips just aren't enough. So I have a roll of masking tape. Now these are specifically the blue masking tape used for painting. Make sure you get the blue ones or else you're going to be ripping paper off your swords. Alright, so getting on to things that you may or may not need. Uh, I figured rulers would have been a given, so I didn't mention anything about needing a ruler earlier, but this is the one I use. Specifically, this is a stainless steel metal edged ruler. It's backed with cork and is very, very flexible as you can see. Now this is what I would typically use as a straight edge for when I take my knife to whatever piece I need to cut out as these craft knives are actually so sharp I've cut several of these things 
well into the center. Some of them, you can probably cut them in half if you let the knife slip. So, plastic rulers as a straight edge for a knife, do not recommend. But when you are drawing different cut sheets and whatnot, I recommend getting the plastic clear ones, as you can see where your lines start and stop. Now I have several, uh, as you can even see, several different types of rulers, protractors, uh, compass. Of course, you always need a good compass for drawing circles and arcs and what have you not. Very useful tool. Another compass. This is actually called a bridge compass. Now they make these in two forms, one with a pencil, but this particular one has a knife edge on it. This is what I use to cut circles out of. Although you can find a metal one, I recommend a metal one as the plastic ones, they tend to bend when you try to cut really large circles, but a useful tool nonetheless. All right, so these are the next two most useful things in my tool bag. These are 30, 60 triangles, and a 45 degree triangle. With these two, you can actually draw any angle in 15 degree increments. Very useful when I need to uh, taper down swords and maybe even create sword tips. This makes a very really good tool for creating points. This is a French curve tool. Now they make these in several different shapes. I picked up a pack of four on Amazon for I think, what, three or four dollars? Then there's this triangular thing. Now they make two different versions of these. One's an engineer scale, one's an architectural scale. This I actually no longer use, but I thought I'd probably show this on camera as it's a pretty interesting little uh, ruler. But since then I've replaced this with a pair of digital calipers. Now you're probably wondering why in the world do I need calipers? This is actually to get scaling off of any sort of pictures of any swords, of any characters holding swords. And it's basically just simple math to figure out how tall do I need to scale this real world or to my size, which in the case would be real world as I'm scaling all my swords to my size. With that being said that you kind of have to know what the original height of the character was. So if any animes or whatnot has a wiki, that's a huge help. Since I started making these giant swords, I've gone to using a 25 foot measuring tape as my yardstick obviously is not long enough anymore. Of course, these are just some of the smaller tools that I have. I tend to buy tools on a per project basis. If it's a tool I don't have, then having to build a sword, that, that, that to me becomes an excuse to go and buy another shiny new ruler or of some sort. Or in my case, I wound up buying a 3D printer, but hopefully I don't intend on doing any sort of project that requires a 3D printer anytime soon, because quite frankly, they are not, uh, I would say affordable for my target audience. So the 3D printing thing, I'm gonna try to keep that out of my sword builds as much as possible. The Blade of Ara was gonna be the only exception to that, but 3D printing videos will be on their own. Hopefully they will not collide with paper swords anytime soon.